In this video, I want to show you real quick how to use a switch statement inside of Java. Now, just for simplicity's sake, I've got a string pre-created for me, and I've got a for loop. And what I'm just doing is I'm going to loop through each individual character of my string. And that's a real simple thing to do. And I'm in this case, I'm printing it out. I'm going to stop printing it in just a second so you can see it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this string into what we sometimes refer to as a phonetic alphabet. That means every place I have an A, it's going to be alpha, B, bravo, etc. And we're going to go through that. Just as an easy way to do that. Now, I could do it inside of regular Java using if statements. But it would have to look something like this. So I'm going to take a, a char and I'm just going to call it letter. And that's going to be equal to that just so I get an individual character. I'm using a char at, so I'm getting the letter at my specific index. Then I can say something like if letter equals equals A. And I print that. Then I could do B and then C. I would have so many else if statements that it'd be pretty, you know, cumbersome to work with. And I would have another problem. And that is my letter A like this. Well, I also would have to now check for capital A. Or letter equals equals A. And that gets even more complicated. Luckily, the switch is designed to be a little bit simpler and easier to write. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace my if statement. Don't need that. I say switch letter. And then I'm going to have some braces. Inside of here, I'm going to define what's known as a case. I say case a colon. And I'm going to come down here, and typically this is where I would handle and say something like uh, system.out.println.alpha. And then I have a break. The break is very important because otherwise it's going to keep on working until it sees a break. Now, I'm actually going to use this to my advantage real quick. Because you see here I have a lowercase a. Well, I could come back and do case a. And now it's going to print it for both my upper and my lowercase. So that's really efficient for me. If I go and run this real quick. You notice that I see M, then alpha, then the rest of my letters. And every time I have an A, it's replaced with the alpha. So we want to simplify this just a little bit to make it work. And we're going to put the rest of our letters in as well. First, I'm going to comment out that little print line. Don't need that anymore. After my break, I'll do case b colon case then I'll do my uppercase b of course I do have another option as well if I don't want to be doing all these repeat my cases multiple times I can specify that I'm going to send it all to lowercase Right? So this is simplify my thing by using the two lowercase. Now I don't have to check for all my uppercases. I can come here, I'm going to say break. Then I'm going to do case C. And I won't have to check for uppercase C. We have all of our letters, A through Z, and that's great. But if we were to print them out, they would all print out in just one big long line, no spaces. That would make it harder to read. So what we're going to do is, just because we know this is going to happen, is I'm just going to put a simple little case and use a space. If I see a space, I'm then going to go in and print out a new line. And simply by calling print line, 
it's going to create a new line for me. So I'll see each letter on each word, and then I'll have that space. So that's nice, and that works really well. But what happens if I have a special character, or I have a number, or something like that? Well, a switch statement gives me a default. And I simply define the default like that, and this lets me put out whatever I want. Print, and then I have to go, well, what was my character before? If I go up to the top of my switch, I can find out it was letter. That's what I'm testing against everything. And this just makes it a whole lot easier if I, instead of having all these nested if statements and else statements and uh, it gets crazy. So this simplifies a lot of stuff for us. Now I am going to do one other quick thing outside of my switch statement. And that is I'm going to do a simple print. And I'm just going to print a space. That way I have a space between all my phonetic letters. It makes it a little bit easier to run. If I run this real quick, you can see here, Mike, Alpha, Romeo, Yankee, Mary, had a little lamb. And so it's a real quick, easy way to do this conversion because I'm using a switch statement. I don't have to worry about nested statements. I don't have to worry about, did I get my right braces and close all my braces correctly? I only have the opening and closing brace to worry about. Dramatically simplifies my life. And that's what I'm really looking for here. So an if statement and an else statements, they're great if I have just like a couple of conditions. But if I'm looking to match against a lot of different options, a switch statement works. And switch statements work if I have characters, they work if I have numbers like integers and some other things like that. So I get a lot of really good ways to work with them. Now, the one downside, and it's a huge downside of switch, is I have to have an exact match. And that's why cases like A, B, C, those work really good. I can't do something easily like, say, all numbers less than 50 or from 0 to 35. That's a very difficult thing to do with a switch. It's not impossible, but it's kind of like, did we really save ourselves anything? And the answer is probably not. So knowing that the switch is there and knowing when to use it will make your life a whole lot simpler and let you work with what you want to do.